Welcome to Trapper Rods Outdoor Pursuits. Today we're on the Big Thompson River and we're about three miles below Olympic Dam there in Estes Park. And my guide today is Brian Brennan. He is with Lost Outfitters. And uh, I always, when I come to a new piece of water, especially out west, I like to get a guide to kind of show me what, how show me the ropes in the, in the local stream. So that's what Brian's going to do here today. Uh, we're going to be doing some nymphing. We've got a few challenges. Uh, the water flow is about 200 cubic feet per second. Normally it's around 100 feet per cubic feet per second. Uh, it's June of 2023, and they've had like epic snowpack and runoff, and it's been storming every day. In fact, uh, rain today. Uh, and he said normally they get 10 minutes of rain, but yesterday it rained for at least an hour or two. So uh, we're going to get out here on this stream. He's going to kind of teach us how to fish and. Uh, Teach us how to catch some trout out here out of the Big Thompson River. So how are we going to be fishing today? Well, we got a nymphing set up. So we got a three fly set up. And with our indicator, strike indicator. I call it a bobber, but fly fishermen are stubborn, so they call it an indicator. Fair. So, you know, fly fishermen got to be special. And then we have some split shot on there. The main thing when you're fishing fast water is you got to be down. You got to be down where the fish are. Right now they're not in the top of the water column, they're in the bottom. We don't really have bugs flying around too active yet, so nymphing is just the most productive form of fly fishing. 90% of fish feeding is subsurface anyways, so if ever you find yourself on new water, unless you see fish rising, your best bet is to uh, just start out with nymphing. We have on a caddis pupa, a little CDC pheasant tail, and then a little red two-bit hooker. Um, all really small flies, but um, small is the name of the game when you're with me. I catch my biggest fish on small flies. I trust a trout can see better than I can see. And that's kind of been years of doing this. I just trust that the fish are, their eyesight is keen. So other than that, the name of the game is finding slow water. So that's what we're after. We've got about a quarter of a mile of the big Thompson here, pretty much all to ourselves. We're at, a, we're at a cabin, it's private property. Uh, there is great fishing all the way up and down the Big Thompson here. You'll see all kinds of pullouts, all kinds of people fishing all the way from the dam. I think it's uh, catch and release only. It's catch and release only the first eight miles down the canyon. We have a ton of fish in Estes Park. They're not big fish, but we have a ton of fish. So it's not uncommon, maybe not today, but in the middle of summer, you know, if I was out there fishing for four hours, if I didn't catch 50 fish, I might be upset. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, that's a <laughs> I, good number. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, Today might be a little tougher because, like I said, we've got way different water conditions than they're used to. Uh, also, it's flies only for the first eight months, Artificial, right? Artificial flies and lures. Artificial so, flies and lures. Yeah. So spinners I mean, would count. Yeah, spinners would count, people, but no worms. No, no worms. worms. That doesn't stop people from using worms. I see them all over the river, but what can you do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, so, we had a bad flood. This river has flooded twice in the last... I guess 50 years now. It flooded in 77, and that one killed like 144 people. Mm -hmm. And then it flooded in 2013, and like you were had to get a helicopter out of Estes Park. These cabins were probably underwater. So um, that's kind of hurt our fishing population growing back. So we've kind of been working. That's why it's so catch and release. They do, I think, consider this um, a trophy fishery. Whatever that means. Sure. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I fish trophy fisheries, and I'm like, this isn't worth anything. But yeah, uh, yeah. well, anywhere I can catch trout, yeah. trophy fishery. Yeah. Right? So we're gonna go ahead and hit the stream. Like I said, we may not be pulling numbers today, but we're gonna do some good learning. Uh, I'm gonna have Brian probably on that fly rod, kind of showing us how it's done. Uh, because I don't know about you, but I'm more of a visual learner. I can kind of look at what somebody's doing and try to try to mimic it. So we're gonna get out on the water. And uh, we'll get back to you in just one second. There he is.
nice little rainbow. Put that little bitty one on the end, didn't he? Nope. No? Yep, 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 yep. Little bitty one on the end. Thanks, Charlie Craven. There we go. So I noticed that on these uh, pockets of water, you kind of start on the outside and work your way in, and then you, you kind of try to get your your float about every six inches in, and six inches can make a difference out here. Yeah, absolutely. Because first of all, we don't know where these fish are at. So we want to fish all the water where the fish can be. The water's so clear, I get it. You Sometimes you can spot fish to fish, but I don't know where these fish are. I'm trying to just work my way over and over and over. And if I'm standing on the left side of the river, that's generally how I do it. I fish from left to right, and I take a step up, and I do it again. So, so how far do you think these fish go out of their way to take a fish? They don't. They don't. Fish but, are lazy creatures. That is, the, that is the thing about trout. They're in the water. If you ever watch like an underwater video of a trout, you know, they're, they're not even, it doesn't even look like they're swimming because they've got themselves set up in the trifecta area is what I call it. So trout have like three main objectives. They have more objectives, but the three main ones are to conserve energy, get oxygenated water, and eat food. All right, so they have to use way too much energy in this white water, but there's a lot of oxygen and a lot of food. So like when we're looking for areas, we're looking for like the seams where there's a lot of oxygen flowing out, but there's also a lot of bugs, but they don't have to use that energy to get it. So they can just kind of sit there with their mouth open, maybe come up and down the left or right a little bit. But I, I, this is all, this is the full range of emotion I bet a trout is going to do. When it's coming to eating nymphs, the dry fly there are going to be a little bit more opportunistic. And the same with like a streamer. But with nymphing, you got to get that fish in front of their face. So, or the fly is in front of their face. So like the difference between a good nymphor and a bad nymphor, honestly, most of the time it's going to be one split shot because you're just not down where the fish are. So if you're fishing a place and you're not catching fish and you're nymphing, your first course of action should probably be at more weight. Then if you're still not catching fish, then you can do more flies. The flies are, I would say, probably the hardest thing. You know, that's where the knowledge comes from. That's why I even hire a guy. Because A, I know fish are everywhere. Trout are everywhere, but I need to know what they're eating. You can be the world's greatest fisherman, but if you're not fishing with what they're eating, you're not going to catch anything. So, you know, but getting down, I think it's just super key. It seems like over the years, I go smaller and smaller bugs and more and more weight. You know, you don't want to be catching rocks every time, but you want to be catching rocks. Hmm. Because if you're not catching rocks, you ain't deep enough. Yeah, that's exactly right. Amen. All yeah, right. These fish, these bugs, yes, they do kind of float down the river, but you got to think, a bug is going to be bouncing along the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Bugs. Good stuff. Well, it was a little bit of a tough day out on the water. Uh, I uh, had to learn how to set a hook on a trout, not a bass. I had ripped the lips off of how many? More than I can count. Yeah, quite a few before I kind of got that finesse downstream, but I did pretty well there at the end, caught a few nice little browns, uh, you'll see the pictures there, and uh, thank you Brian for taking me out. Hey, I had a great time. I appreciate it, yeah, we had a good time, talked a lot, good dude, if you come up to uh, Estes and you want to fly fish, whether you've never picked up a fly rod before in your life, or if you're kind of a novice like me, give Brian a call, I'll put the information at the end of the video, and come up and enjoy this water, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous place to fish, good people, good food, it's a good time. Rocky Mountain National Park's awesome. Yeah. It's just a great place. So come on up and go with Lost Outfitters. Correct. And uh, go get them. You know, they do walk-in, they do hike-in trips. Sorry, they ain't no walk-in in Colorado. Yeah, hike-in. They do hike-in trips, anything you want. Uh, come see them and they'll get you fixed up here in Estes Park, Colorado. So for now, uh, this is the end of our episode. Thank you for stopping by and God bless.